Okay, this is the um, this is the test problem that uh, that I gave in class, <clears throat> uh, and I've already set up part of the thing just to save some time. So here I have uh, a spacecraft um, going near an asteroid. Okay, so they give this distance as 1,200 kilometers. They give the speed of the uh, satellite, um, and they give the volume. Oh, I erased part of it. No, I didn't. I squared the volume of the astronaut, the, the asteroid, and uh, the mass. Well, they give the density, so I calculated the mass. I, I don't want to spend time on that. Okay, so then they say, estimate the change in momentum. Well, first of all, let, let's just sketch the, the trajectory. You know, this thing is clearly, as it comes by, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do something like that, right? It's going to get bent towards the asteroid, um, the asteroid won't move as much because they have the same force on it, but it's very massive. Okay, so let's estimate that. You know, this is this is an estimate problem, and you're going to have to pick some things here. And I know you feel uncomfortable doing that. I, I know, but you have to do that. Okay, and and so there's not just one right answer here. There's a, a right method, but you could do it a lot of different ways. So what I did was I said, okay, the the spacecraft's going pretty fast. Uh, so there's going to, and, and the, when it's really far away from the asteroid, it's not going to be interacting with it very much. Only when it's close will be, and the strongest interaction will be when it's within this 1,200 kilometers. Okay. So if I, if I knew this, I could say F net equals delta P over delta T. Can I calculate the net force? Well, I can calculate it right there. It's going to actually change over here, but not too much. Um, can I calculate delta T? I can. Well, I can get an estimate for it, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say delta P equals F net delta T. And so for the net force, I'm going to use the gravitational force right there, okay, which is not correct, but it's good enough because it's not going to change that much over this whole time. Uh, and then for the time, I'm going to assume it's going at a constant velocity across this. I'm going to pick, if it's 1,200 kilometers of, of far from it, I'm going to pick a distance of 1,200 kilometers, just randomly mostly, okay? Just so I can say, okay, that's the time over which it's going to act. You could pick a shorter interval, and that'd be acceptable too. Um, really, we're just getting a <clears throat> rough estimation here, and then if we want to do it better, we'd, we'd do it in a different way. So let's first find this delta T. So if I say v average, uh, the, the speed is 10 to the fourth meters per second, it's going to be delta s over delta t. And if delta s is uh, 1.2 or 1,200 kilometers, so uh, I can solve for delta t. Delta t is going to be equal to uh, delta s, 1,200 times 10 to the third meters over 10 to the fourth meters per second. So that's going to be 120 seconds. So now I have my time. Okay. <clears throat> now for the gravitational force. Um, let's just calculate this as the gravitational force right here. It's going to be Fg equals g mass of the spacecraft, mass of the asteroid I'll call Matilda, over uh, r squared. And then it's going to be, in this case, 0, negative 1, 0, right? Because it's going in the negative x direction. But that's not too important here. OK, so I, I have everything I need right there. So I can just say 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons meter squared, I'm sorry, kilogram squared meters squared. That's G. The mass of the spacecraft is 805. It gave that. The mass of Matilda I just calculated before is 8.75 times 10 to the 17th kilograms. And then R is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the third, fourth, sixth meters squared. Okay, and then that's the that's the magnitude 
Uh, I'll write it as FG. Because it asks for estimate the change momentum. Okay, so it doesn't say not as a magnitude. So I'll, I'll give it the real way. Okay, let's see. Let me put this in my calculator. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 805 times 8.75 times 10 to the 17th divided by 1.2 times 10 to the 6 quantity squared. And I get 0 0.033. Newtons. And and I'll go ahead and leave that. Zero, negative one. Zero. That's the that makes it a vector. Okay? So I don't have to do that. That's fine. So now delta P is just gonna be this times delta T. Delta T is uh, 120. I should be able to do that in my head, but you know when you're in a hurry, you just can't do these things. Three three. So I get 3.96. So delta P is going to be 0, negative 3.960 0, uh, kilogram meters per second. So that's my change momentum as it passes by here. Okay. So it and just look at the initial momentum. The initial mom magnitude momentum is uh, 8 times 10 to the 6 kilogram meters per second, and the change is a small amount here. So this assumption's okay, right? Because it does it's not going down that much compared to the way it was going before. So I'm probably okay. So it's a small change momentum. But really this is important because if we know if we can actually measure the change momentum of the spacecraft, one of the things it can do is give us an estimate for the mass of the asteroid. So okay.